I'm Tim from Canadian Craft Tours and today we're talking about wine bottles. And specifically, why are they that size? We're all used to it, it's a 750 ml bottle or 25.6 fluid ounces. But why that volume specifically? Why did we settle on that? We could have anything we wanted, couldn't we? The answer comes in many different layers. Now, first, why are we locked into it? That's because in 1975, European regulators said that wine bottles are going to be 750 ml for sale everywhere. And the whole world just fell in step. Nobody's going to challenge that because it would cost far too much money to try and break that rule or, you know, get a different size in. It's just too complicated. So we're basically stuck with it. But being stuck with it isn't such a bad thing. The origination of the 750 ml size comes from the Industrial Revolution. Now, yes, there were glass wine bottles way back, in fact, way back to Roman times, but they were kind of a party trick. They weren't packaging wine in those bottles. They were showing it off or demonstrating um, that they had the financial acumen and wherewithal to own a glass bottle, which was a pretty cool thing at the time. Nope, it was the British Industrial Revolution where they figured out how to make very hot fires to melt silica to make bottles both cheaply and conveniently. It turns out that the amount of glass you can put on the end of a blowpipe, uh, the blowpipe's the thing that glass blowers use to make stuff, will make a 750 ml bottle quite conveniently. And that lines up with lung capacity. The pulmonary capacity of a single breath to blow that bottle is just about 750 milliliters. So it all kind of came together beautifully. The size also allows for six servings per bottle, about 125 ml per serving. And that's kind of a standard tavern measure. It's also one fifth of a gallon. And you'll sometimes hear of whiskey as being referred to as a fifth of scotch or something like that. It's an older term, but it's kind of amusing. Throw in some more math and a case of 12 750 ml bottles works out to be about two gallons. And the case of 12 turns out to be extremely convenient for stacking on a skid. It's a rectangular box. You can lock them in in different rows. They stack up nicely. They're just about the right size for one human being to pick up and carry. It really kind of worked out okay. With the 750 mil size, something else came into play. The discovery of the role of oxygen in aging wine. When you bottle wine, it can have a slight reductive character. Brand new wines ready for the bottle might smell a little sulfury. And it's the sulfur that goes with uh, eggs, not with burnt matches. It's hydrogen sulfide, uh, a form of thiol. That smell goes away with oxygen exposure and the wine seems more mature and ready to drink. Now, given the size of the wine bottle, the volume of the wine in size, and the hole in the neck, that is the tube that the cork is pegged into, there is an absolute rate of oxygen transfer of ingress around the cork and into the bottle where the oxygen does its magic and reduces that sulfury smell. In 750 mils of wine with a standard cork, that level of oxygen transfer is very predictable. And it's important in countries where better wine is bought and aged for long periods of time. Like France, where the saying goes, you don't drink your own wine, you drink your grandfather's wine. You don't buy your own wine, you buy your children's wine. So knowing how long that bottle is going to last in your cellar is really a good thing. Of course, it doesn't really apply to us in North America. Mostly we do trunk aging on the way home from the liquor store. So there you have it, 750 mils. It works out for lung capacity, for glass blowing, for storing in cases, and for aging. Amazing! Wine is always poetic and lovely. Hey, thanks for watching. If you're enjoying these videos, go ahead and pop open that bottle of wine and click on like and subscribe. Ding that bell for us, would you? Thanks!